In this video, we begin to consider the generic risk assessment process. A generic process is a good starting point for any risk assessment where a better model does not already exist. This handsome fellow says the generic risk assessment process begins with our generic risk equation. Risk equals a consequence times a probability. We're going to use it as the basis for a qualitative risk assessment by breaking the two factors, consequence and probability, down into their most essential components. A generic process proceeds by decomposing a specific risk into its consequences and their probabilities. First, it decomposes consequence into specific harm or harms, thereby identifying the consequences of concern for decision making. Next, it decomposes the probability of each consequence into a sequence of events that are necessary in order for that particular consequence or harm to occur. This process works for any kind of risk, and it can be useful for quantitative or qualitative assessment. In this course, we will be looking at its qualitative risk assessment technique. Notice the equation graphic here. It represents the decomposition in algebraic terminology. We'll refer to it from time to time throughout this week. The risk of concern must of course be identified before you begin to develop a generic process model. Once the risk is identified, consequences occupy a central role in this modeling process. The consequence is, as you know, the undesirable outcome that makes a risky situation unpleasant. It's the negative consequence of a risk of loss, or it can be the failure to obtain the desired gains we strive for in an opportunity risk. You should always begin your generic risk assessment process by identifying the harm or harms that could occur. It's not possible to identify a sequence of necessary events until the consequence or consequences are known. Here are some examples to illustrate the range of consequences that can occur with a single risk. Aquatic nuisance species can cause a variety of consequences of concern. Economic consequences can occur, but it's not sufficient to identify consequences in such a broad way. To use the generic process properly, you must identify the specific harms that could occur. Here we suggest this could be the loss of commercial fisheries. Even that is not sufficient. At some point in the risk assessment, you'll need to say which specific species are at risk of loss. So within a category of consequences, there may be more than one consequence. There may be also more than one category of consequences. Environmental consequences, for example, could include taking out the bottom of the food chain and the loss of species diversity if native species are outcompeted and their populations collapse. There could be other categories of consequences. In this example, we suggest that personal injuries could result from aquatic nuisance species. And we note that many people may become quite upset that the aquatic nuisance species are causing so much damage. Although it's common practice to roll all the consequences up into broad categories like economic and environmental consequences, for communication efficiency, make sure you can identify the sources of harm to interest to risk managers as specifically as possible. Hydraulic fracturing of shale rock to release natural gas, also called fracking, is a risk of growing concern in many parts of the world. Although the potential consequences can be numerous, three common ones are contamination of surface water supplies, traffic accidents, and noise pollution. The list of consequences can sometimes be quite long, as is the case with fracking. 
In such a case, it's important to consider all the consequences that risk managers will consider for decision making. That list may be considerably shorter than a comprehensive list of all the possible consequences. The approach would be the same for any kind of risk at all. Probability describes the likelihood that a specific consequence or harm will occur. Once you have identified the range of consequences that are relevant for decision making, you'll want to identify the sequence of key events necessary for each of these undesired outcomes to occur. So to repeat, always begin your generic risk assessment by identifying the harm or harms that could occur. Then continue by describing the likelihood of the events necessary for each of these harms to occur. This might mean having a different sequence of events for each specific consequence, or as is more likely the case, one sequence of events may cause multiple consequences to occur. What is hopefully clear, however, is the fact that it is impossible to identify the probability elements until after the consequence elements have been identified. You already have some knowledge of the aquatic nuisance species risk. In this case, a single sequence of events can lead to all of the consequences. That sequence is a pathway exists, and the aquatic nuisance species makes it to the pathway, and the aquatic nuisance species survives transit through the pathway, and the aquatic nuisance species establishes a breeding colony in the new water basin, and the aquatic nuisance species spreads in the new water basin. Mathematically, this is expressed as a multiplicative equation as shown. If any one of these events fails to occur, the probability of establishment goes to zero. If that happens, then there is no risk. Fracking has a wide range of potential consequences, and no one sequence of events is going to work for all of them. With respect to the pollution of surface water resources, you see here one of several sequences of events that could lead to that consequence. Here the sequence is the well is not constructed properly, and natural gas enters the well bore, and pressure builds in the well bore, and the blowout preventer fails, and a blowout occurs, and waste reaches surface water resources. Notice that decomposing the sequence of events in this way can help the risk analysis team think about risk management options as well. In this case, which of these six elements can be reduced to zero, or if not zero, to the lowest possible level? It should also be obvious that this sequence of events is not relevant for considering how traffic accidents will occur or how noise pollution will increase. In situations like this, you're going to need multiple sequences of events to address the other consequences. Any risk can be conceptually represented by the probability times consequence occasion. If either of these two elements is zero, there is no risk. So an obvious risk management strategy is to reduce one or the other of these two elements to zero. The generic risk assessment process not only has the advantage of breaking a risk down into its most important elements, it can also provide a blueprint for reducing the risk by acting on one or more of the elements of the decomposed risk to reduce them to zero.